Hi, Archie. Thank you for the time. How are you experiencing your fight week thus far? And is this the first time that you're fighting in Chicago? Yeah, this is the uh, first time that I've I've like extended stayed in Chicago. So it's been good. Um, fight week has been good so far. A little hectic today. Um, but yeah, it's been good. This is a huge event for Bellator MMA. They have the biggest card of the weekend. And the team of this card is that they want to showcase their top prospects like you. You have made a lot of noise already since coming over in 2021 with some big finishes. How was your time thus far in this major MMA promotion? Because you look happy in the cage while performing. Yeah, um, yeah, I am happy when I am out there. Um, it's been great. I've, I've been able to go out there and perform my best and and showcase, uh, you know, some great skill sets that I have. Uh, I still haven't been able to put it all out there, um, but you know, it's it's uh, it's it's been great. Um, yeah, and, and I'm excited to go out there and, and and show my skills and what I have to offer again in another exciting fashion uh, coming up this Friday. You stepped away from Bellator in March of this year, and a lot of people were confused by that. They were afraid that you might not come back. Thankfully, you did. Why did you step away for a fight? And is your focus right now only on Bellator MMA? Um, so, yeah. So, I fought in August. I believe it was August of uh, 21. Uh, right? Yeah. And then uh, there was the March of 22 that I that I fought in Eagle. Um, and just Bellator didn't, had signed me after that first fight. So, you know, I still needed to stay active and continue getting experience. So, I went over there and fought in Eagle. Um, and yeah, you know, I want to climb the ranks up in Bellator and claim that belt. So yeah, that was a good fight in Eagle, by the way, what do you know about your opponent who's about to make his Bellator MMA debut? Did you see some footage of him or anything? Uh, yeah, I've watched some footage on him. Um, I know he's in trouble. I know that. Bellator has announced a co-promotion with Ryzen in Japan at the end of this year. Did you catch this Archie? And what do you think about two promotions coming together with their best fighters? Yeah, that's. I think it's awesome. I, I saw that they've also have like had some talks in the past with like Eagle and stuff, so that's cool too. Um, and yeah, you know, I was I saw um, Patricio uh, Pitbull over there training throughout this week, and he's he's uh, you know training like the the pride rules and kicking on the ground and and soccer kicks and all that stuff. So. Um, it's it's cool that they're like doing cross promotion and and building uh you know almost like a like a full community inside of the MMA instead of just like promotion versus uh you know who's just like one promotion at a time you know what i mean like it's cool that that uh like boxing has WBC champ you uh, or you know WBO or IBF and stuff like that so it's cool that they're uh, building some camaraderie in between uh MMA and being the first to do it Thank you for the time, Archie. I cannot wait to see you perform again. Good luck on fight night, sir. Thank you, sir. Jay? Hey, thanks very much. Archie, welcome back. Uh, just wanted to expand a little. I mean, when you mention seeing a bit of tape and knowing that he's in trouble, when it comes to an opponent like uh, Jesse, who's been out for a little bit, he doesn't have a ton of fights, so maybe footage is hard to find. Do you, you know, put a lot of stock into what you see in that footage, or do you just focus more on yourself? Yeah, I'm not putting it so much on like what I saw in footage and mean like, dang, this guy, you know, he struggles in this area or this area. This, that's why I'm saying he's in trouble. I'm just saying he's fighting me and he's in trouble because he's doing that. Gotcha. And then, you know, when we look at this opportunity here, there is a lightweight Grand Prix coming up. It is a stacked division, probably a lot of competition to get in there, but do you feel that maybe a big performance here and you might be able to uh, throw your name in the hat? Um, I would like to think that, you know, I'm, I'm still obviously, you know, there's in that top 10 of rankings there, there's a lot of experience in these guys. Um, and so I understand that um, I'm going to continue to make sure that I just go out there and put on exciting performances. So if that opportunity does come across in front of me, um, I'm, I'm uh, able to uh, jump onto it. And last one for me, you mentioned uh, Pitbull training the pride rules, training those, uh, you know, soccer kicks and everything. Is that a rule set that you'd like to try competing under one day? Uh, probably not. I mean, if it, if it happened, I would be, you know, if, if that's what happened, like, and I, I happened to, 
somehow end up fighting in one of those organizations, you know, fighting's fighting, so I'm down to do it. But uh, I'm cool with the, the rule sets that we got in place here. All right, fair enough. Best of luck on Friday. Thank you, sir. Kobe? Hi, Archie. Kobe from the Pro Sports Podcasters. Obviously, you're feeling pretty confident in your skill set, but you would you admit that you're still developing as a fighter. Where do you feel like you've developed the most since becoming a professional? Um, hmm. That's a good question. I would say um, I think I've gotten better everywhere, but I guess the most would, would be more of just like mental than than the actual physical stuff. Like I feel like I'm I'm just making a lot of mental strides. Um and then just like how to um you know be composed during practice when I don't want to be there, but I need to be there. And um, you know, just throughout life and you know, I've become a father too in the past couple uh about a year ago, just over a year Congrats. ago I became a father and you know, nine months before that, finding out you're pregnant and stuff. So just having to, to mentally build yourself and, and become stronger that way, I think is um, one of my biggest attributes since becoming a pro. And since your first fight with Bellator, have you changed the way you prepare for fights? Has it given you the opportunity to maybe add coaches or something like that? Um, no, I, I'm pretty much preparing all the same. Um, you know, I got, yeah, yeah, no. I want to say anything has really changed since since uh, um, my first Bellator fight. I've I've just stayed consistent with those who've been consistent with me, and uh, with doing that, you just make you know incremental little growth every single day that you uh, you train, and even the days that you don't train. But you know you get to think about the things that you did train the day before. You have the next day off. But you get to think about those things, and then you make growth there too. And, you know, you stay consistent with that through two years. You make uh, some big jumps. You're an exciting fighter, Archie. I'm looking forward to your next fight, buddy. Thank you. Killian? Hey, Archie. You come from the, obviously, the strong wrestling background, but you've looked very comfortable on your feet through your first five fights, uh, pro fights, I mean. Uh, yeah. What do you credit for the, the comfort in the kickboxing realm of MMA so early in your career? Uh, well, I credit my head coach, Justin Salas. Um, he's been a big part of like understanding how to, for me, he was also a, uh, a wrestler coming out of college, went off and had a successful fighting career. And, um, he just came from a, a, a good background under his head coach was Trevor Whitman. And, and he came from a good background of understanding striking as a wrestler. So when he was teaching it to me, it was like, you know, I wasn't trying to learn it as a boxer or from a boxer. I was learning it from a wrestler who had learned striking already. So just it just transitioned over from him to me very easily. And um, I think I have natural skill sets and, and speed and strength and coordination, athleticism that complemented it. So it became uh, even a little bit easier for me. But mainly it was just, uh, you know, he, he said, you know, A and B and, and for the way he's saying it is is the same A and B to me as it is for him because we're both wrestlers versus like a, a boxer. My A and B might be a little bit different uh, perspective for, for like a wrestler. And then uh, there's been mention of the, the Bellator lightweight Grand Prix coming up. Uh, that obviously opens up for a lot of movement within your division. Uh, by the end of 2023, in a perfect world, where do you see yourself in the lightweight division of Bellator? Oh man, I don't know. In a perfect world, the world's not perfect. I don't know. That's tough to say. You know, like I'm, I'm not. The easy answer would would be to to come out here and say some outlandish stuff and be like, you know, I'm gonna go out there and and take care of all of this stuff and and I'll finish everybody and you know. But the truth is, is that you know, at the end of this fight, I'll be six and zero. Oh. That's still pretty young uh, in comparison to the top ten when it comes to uh, experience and, and just what they have at the table. Not that I don't think that I can't go out there and compete against those guys, but when Bellator is going to put together their tournament, they're probably going to look at their top 10 guys and the guys who have experience and all of that. And, and at the end of that tournament will be 
probably the world champion, right? So it's that's a tough spot to say. I do think in tournament format, there are um, chances that people may get hurt and can't perform or compete. Um, and in that, you know, I'll be waiting for all these phone calls if, if that's my situation. Thank you for your time. Best of luck. Thank you. MMA locker room. How's it going, RC? How you doing today? I'm good, sir. How are you? Oh, man, doing awesome, man. Glad to talk to you, man. I remember watching you fight on LFA, I think, uh, was uh, 2021, you know? Now, now you're here, now doing your thing. Yeah, yes. Uh, it's been good. Just wanted to ask, man, you know, with the transformation of all the wrestlers coming into MMA and being dominant, like Bo Nickel, Pat Downey, um, what was like one of those first fights that you remember in the sport that made you say, hey, I need to become a fighter and that made you become the fighter that you are today? Um, Rampage Jackson versus Ricardo Arona in Pride when uh, he went for a triangle choke. Rampage lifted him up, slammed him, knocked him out. Oh man, that's classic right there. That's a classic one right there, man. I try to recreate it with my buggy choke slam, but dang, can't beat it. Can't beat it if you didn't knock him out with the slam. Yeah, that reminds me of the Matt Hughes versus I think it was uh, Carlos Newton way back in the day too. Uh, he did something like that too. Yeah. But yeah, man, definitely, man. Just looking forward to uh, your fight coming up this weekend on Friday. Uh, but when you step into that cage, what's going into your mind? Take me into the locker room with you. Do you see that opponent as just another guy to beat? Or do you see that as like a murder, murder, kill, kill outing for you? Um, yeah, I don't I don't get too dark and, and violent in my head, um, you know, because I'm I, I'm just kind of honestly, I'm seeing myself as just an elite competitor. And we're going to go out there and our competition this time is to fight. Um, and I just want to beat you in every way that I can. And in doing that in this sport, it does become violent and it does become aggressive and it does become mean. But I'm not back there like I want to kill this guy. Like I I don't know anything about my opponent in his personal life, but I'm sure he has loved ones and I want him to return to those. But for the 15 minutes that he's obligated to me, uh, he's... Uh, He's he's looking to be in some pain, yeah. Thank you for your time, Archie. Cool. Thank you, guys.